Good morning, good morning, good morning, world. Uh, and welcome to the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast. Uh, we thank you all uh, for tuning in with us this morning um, as we conversate about sports topics that are, let's say, prevalent in uh, today's world. And so, yes, well, we are back like a shark attack, back like we left some, back like we ain't got no clothes on our back, and for the world is a better place when the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast is taking place. And so we thank you all for tuning in with us this morning as we conversate about the latest sports topics that have taken place from this past week and will be upcoming this week. It is always a blast to have you all tune in and participate with us every weekend. As a reminder that every week we always like to begin our podcast by reminding our audience that the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast can be found on Facebook via the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast community page, on Instagram at the Early Morning Sports Talk POD, Again, on Instagram, on IG, at the Early Morning Sports Talk Podcast, P-O-D, as well as our own Facebook pages via Brandon Price, Jamar Goodman, and in Jones. And this morning, we don't have a guest. It's me and my brother, Jamar Rockin. Uh, and we have not done this in quite some time, Jamar. It's been a while, bro, since it's been me. You just had to been at least a year and a half, maybe almost two years. Um, and so... so Today is June 3rd of 2023, and we have seen yet again another fascinating week in the sports world, where we saw the Denver Nuggets defeat the Miami Heat in game one of the NBA Finals, as well as the Stanley Cup Finals. Uh, looking forward to begin tonight between the Las Vegas Golden Knights, as well as the Florida Panthers. Uh, alongside our South Sider, uh, White Sox closer GM Hendricks make his return back to the mound from beating cancer. So big shout out to that brother. Very proud of him. Um, and he is back on the mound. And on the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast, we just want to send a big up. So congratulations. I'm um, in well wishes to Mr. Hendricks. And so with that being said, uh, introducing my brother from another mother, one of my partners on the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast, Mr. Jamar Goodman. Good morning, sir. How are you? Man, I am doing fantastic, Brandon. Uh, long week, but very rewarding. How are you doing today? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. Um, I'm actually realizing that I forgot to do the tags, but it is all right. We will do them as we go along. And so with that being said, let's get right into it because we pretty much know the topics that we're talking about. We watch these topics. We've been watching them for years. And so basketball is not the newest of sports to us, bro. And so let's talk the NBA Finals. Um, we saw game one of the NBA Finals uh, take place. And thus far from the looks of things, um, it's only game one. Um, it was a tale of two stories. Uh, one story was, um, for me, bro, the Miami Heat missing a lot of open shots. Question is, bro, will they be able to continue to hit those shots um, as the series goes forward? Were they potentially tired from last series? And then on the other hand, the Denver Nuggets seem to be well rested, but just a team that's clicking on all cylinders and contributors from various levels. But I want your opinion, bro, and we can chime in from there. And so just give me your thoughts on the NBA Finals. Um, and additionally, let's see who you will have for your pick in regards to who you think will host the NBA championship trophy for the season. And just first things first, just want to, you know, shout out both of these teams for getting here because the path that they, you know, took to get here. Um especially for Miami was the road less traveled per se, but nevertheless, you know, Denver's first time to the finals, uh, Miami and his historic run so far. So we have two teams that's worthy of being here based on what they've been through. With all that being said, we saw game one on uh, Thursday from the moments that I was able to watch the game. It just looked like Miami was getting bullied mm. by Denver. Denver just did whatever they wanted. Um, if Denver wanted to shoot open threes, they got open threes. If Denver wanted to, you know, use their height advantage and bully them down low, that's what they did. If, mm -hmm. if Denver wanted to get to the free throw line, that's what they did. If, if, if Denver wanted to, you know, uh, play stifling defense and read what the offense was running, that's what they did. They did mm -hmm. exactly what they wanted to do. They, they wanted – Bam Iobio to take 25 shots. That's the most shots he ever took in his career. They mm -hmm. they wanted him to do that. That was intentional, huh? Absolutely. Because, <coughs> mm -hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, would you rather have Bam Iobio shooting 15 
twenty foot jump shots all game, or would you want right. Bruce and Martin and Jimmy to get hot from behind the arc, or just you know attacking the basket at all times? I mean, you, you take the two. That's why Jokic was uh you know playing so awful. They they wanted that shot. That was exactly right. the plan. So, needless to say, I mean Miami's you know, in the fourth quarter started to, you know, maybe figure some things out, but nevertheless, you know, Denver controlled that game by far. Um, Miami shot two free throws the whole game. That is the lowest amount two free throws. ever, ever mm-hmm. in a playoff game. Mm-hmm. Two. Mm-hmm. Wow. Denver yeah. shot 20. Um, and, you know, Miami, for Miami to be here, you know, in the regular season, they wasn't the greatest three-point shooting team at all. Their defense was there, but the three-point shooting wasn't there. Miami, the reason why is here, one of the main reasons was the three-point shooting has been, like, mm-hmm. at a very high clip. It wasn't really there. They shot 33%. So, I mean, so far, it's going like a lot of people expect it. You know, Denver mm-hmm. is the better team. Um, but... You know, I'm not going to count Miami out because it's just game one. Game one right. is just, you know, fill them out tight game, make the adjustments accordingly. And then, you know, afterwards, you know, more adjustments going to be made. And then to the point is where the effort is just going to get it done. So series isn't over yet. Let's see what Miami does tomorrow night. But basically it's going as expected. Denver just, you know, coming out, still undefeated at home and doing their thing, man. Yeah. Um, and to kind of just hit on what you're saying, like in regards to the series, um, and let's just say for game one, the biggest expectation, um, I think was probably unanimous, Jamar. We all expected Miami to lose game one. Um, we expected Denver to uh take care of business. It would have been a shocker, Jamar, if we would have saw Miami came in after going through what they went through in that Boston series to literally go into Denver, deal with that climate up there, which is another factor, deal with that climate up there, um, and then go in and pull off a game one. Um, that would have been like one of the biggest upsets since maybe 2001, bro. And 2001, we remember as basketball fans, is when AI uh, went up to LA and he shocked the hell out of the basketball world in the LA Lakers. Um, pull off one of the biggest stunners in NBA Finals history. One of the biggest moments, actually, still to this day in his career and in NBA Finals history. So that would have been just an ultimate shocker if it happened. Um, and so Denver, um, one thing I observed, bro, is this. Denver is bigger than Miami in every position. Every position. Yeah. And so... Miami is definitely outsized by people that are bigger and very, very, very skilled. And so it's like at a moment, Jamar, what can you really do with the Joker uh, when it really comes down to it? Uh, When it really came down to Joker needing a basket, he got his basket when he wanted it, like you stated. And he's been doing that the whole playoffs. They just ain't been Miami. (laughs) And so. One thing I observed, bro, is when he got the rock, right? Third quarter, he really ain't do nothing. We like, ah, oh, the Joker is very quiet at this game. Low key, he still had a triple double, y'all, but a lot of that came in the fourth quarter. Um, he wasn't doing normal Joker stuff. It was more so Jamal Murray being unstoppable, and which um, I will talk about that shortly. Um, and I got a, I got a question for you to see what can he do about that, but. He basically got the rock, back down, bam, out of bio. As soon as he did it, it was a foul. I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We kind of knew that this would happen, but we like, all right, if it's this easy, then, yeah. And this, once again, kind of goes to the traditional heat, bro. The heat, heart. The heat, great culture. The heat, hard work. Undrafted players. One of their biggest downfalls to me, honestly, bro, is they don't have enough size sometimes. And so teams are able to expose Bam. They are able to expose Bam. That's what LeBron and them did in the bubble. The, the Lakers were just too big for them. If the Lakers had a bigger man, they could have actually gave Denver more of a run. If they had a second center, 
outside of AD. We all know that if the Lakers were bigger, they couldn't put in this other guy behind uh, AD. He just wasn't enough. He was too small. Um, and so, yeah, Miami, you know, they ain't got Detman no more. Um, they got, uh, you know, this guy who comes in with a lot of energy. When he kind of defended him, um, Cody, I'm like, yeah. all right, Jamar. I'm like, all right. Cody got, and excuse me, y'all, y'all finna kill me. I'm like, he got that white boy energy. Yeah, he got that white boy energy. You know that come out, super energized, ready to go, white boy energy, white boy energy. I'm like, all right, he got all that energy. I'm like, all right, he can stick with the Joker, right? But look, the very next possession, that's what the Joker did, bro. He went right at him. He basically got the ball, moves him clean out the way like a damn bowling ball, <laughs> and dunked on. I'm like, oh. I'm like, oh, man. I'm like, he must have been thinking what we were thinking. And, like, he really think he can stick me. And he, this is how bold and cold and, and just raw this dude is. He got the rock on the very next possession. This reminds you of some Kobe type stuff. Came right at him. Put him clean on the floor and just sent a blunt message to him and say, you can't, you thought, you, you really thought, you really thought you can come in and do something. And that must have flat line hurt that man, Cody Sutherland, <laughs> so bad because he's like, yeah, you know, I did great on that possession. I'm the guy that could be the hero here. No, not going to work. And so that right there was just living proof that he is unguardable, literally. Um, he is so skilled. Um, it's amazing. He is so beefy. It's amazing. He's so tall. It's amazing. He's so lanky. It's amazing. And so, um, yeah, um, the Miami Heat are in for a long series, brother. They are they are in for a very long series here. Um, I'm very interested to see how they come out. They're going to come out busting game, too. I know Miami. They're going to come out busting. They're going to come out fighting. They're going to come out scrapping. Um, I expect the dog fight game, too. Uh, but it seemed like Denver, they just been on that all year. They're like, all right, we, we've been into dog fights. And when it's time to score, we get our buckets. But the one question I got for you, this is this, Um, yeah. And good morning to our viewers. Uh, please feel free to chime in and uh, chat with us. Jamal Murray was going off. And as a basketball fan or somebody that watches the game and you look at people with certain heights and et cetera, I was just thinking, why not put Jimmy Butler on Jamal Murray and let somebody else stick the other you know, and then you try to do your best to put on the Adebayo or Joker. Right. Um, but the Heat didn't do that. And so can you maybe explain why the Heat didn't do that? And do you think that's a possibility for them to do in regards to making adjustments for the rest of the series? I mean, there's only two things I can think of why they didn't do that initially. One, uh, maybe because they're trying to conserve, you know, Jimmy Butler uh -huh. and you know, in the beginning of the playoffs, especially in the Milwaukee series, you know, he used a lot of energy. It was going berserk. Even Drew Holiday says not even like MJ in his prime or LeBron in his peak could stop the shots that Jimmy Butler was hitting. So maybe all that energy mm -hmm. he exerted early on, as you see, as we go further in the playoffs, his scoring hasn't been there. He's been, you know, more – you know, in certain games, just being lackadaisical at times. Like at the beginning of this game, he hit, he had the first five Very points and then chilled out. Is it because Very. he's tired? Is he trying to conserve his energy to the fourth quarter? Like, is it the know? length of Denver? I mean, that could be a possibility too. So, so maybe that's part of the reason why they didn't put him on Murray. And then the other thing is maybe, maybe they didn't want him to get in foul trouble. I mean, it's, I mean, I would imagine in game two that he would have to be starting out on Jamal Murray to slow that down. Because, I mm -hmm. mean, like you mentioned, and like we all know, there's no slowing down the Joker at all. Right. <laughs> and it's and it's still, like, crazy to even, you know, uh, to even, like, comprehend because he's slow as rocks. He, he can't jump higher than the curve. But yet right. he's they're dominating. He's averaging a triple double, almost a thirty point triple double for the playoffs. Like, right. So, 
So it's like, you have to slow down something. You can't slow him down. So you need to slow down the parts around uh, Nicola to right. give yourself a fighting chance here. That's one of the best tactics. You got to try to slow down the others. Cause you ain't gonna you ain't gonna stop the joke that 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 that, that yeah that, that ain't happening. Oh, yeah. You're not, man. So I do agree with you. I, I expect Miami to come out with more, you know, aggressiveness. They definitely, you know, besides their defense and the three point shooting that happened to come alive in the playoffs. The other thing that Eric Sprocher mentioned and it is kind of to their fundamental. They they usually attack the basket. And mm-hmm. they didn't really do that. They was relying on the three point shooting, and it didn't didn't unfold at all for them. Nope, did not drop at all. Struess was zero for ten from the field, zero for nine from three. Mm-hmm. Uh, Martin was one of seven from the field. He only shot two threes. Duncan Robinson was one of six from the field, one of five from three point land. It, it wasn't. It, I mean, it wasn't there. So if right. you're not hitting the three, you got to go back to what you know for attacking the basket, like Jimmy. Attack the basket. You live at the free throw line. Because when you start getting to the free throw line and attacking the basket, that means the defense collapsed. And then maybe the shooters get the ball in the pocket. Perfect pass right in the, in the shooting pocket, in rhythm. You probably get more better results. And keep in mind that Jimmy Butler stated that post game. He stated that the Heat need to attack more in game two. And so I'm definitely with you. Uh, the Heat have really, they, you know, we, we see all the three-point shots that they made, y'all. We see the second-half surge that they've had. We see the great defensiveness from this team, low-key, very good defensive team, uh, even with an undersized big man. Uh, but the, the biggest key has really been attacking when you think about it. They have been the attacker. Jimmy Butler has been the attacker. Um, and when they attack and they go down and they put their head down to get to the basket, they are causing fouls. And they have making a big living off the free throw line. A big living, especially Jimmy Butler. Think about it. What happened in game six? He started attacking. He put his head down. He got to the basket. He made about seven free throws in those last four or five minutes of that game to bring them from being down to get them to that deficit and get them up by uh, three points late in the game. And so, or sorry, one point late in the game. And so, yeah. It was just like, I felt like Miami was just chugging up a lot of jump shots, a lot of jump shots, a lot of jump shots. And the jump shots was not dropping. Good morning, Kevin Brown. Kevin Brown stated all facts. And so, you know, like, they were chugging up a lot of jump shots. They were not dropping. Um, And, yeah, man, I'm just, I'm curious, bro, was that part of fatigue? Was that part of the length of Denver? Um, that climate up there is a real thing, according to other players. Like, you know, they state that that's a real thing, that climate in Denver. Um, it could have been a number of factors just being on the road. Um, you coming from uh, Boston, going directly to Denver. Um, could be a number of things. And so, um, yeah, I guess in this case now, oh, go ahead, bro. I was going to say, um, um, our, our uh, counterpart, and he he said that uh, Joker's on a different level of basketball right now. It's giving LeBron basketball IQ with Dirk shooting. Miami has no chance. Um, yeah. Oh, I see that comment. Yeah. Mm. But, but that's a perfect segue to a question I wanted to ask you. Because so we we know who uh, Chris Broussard is. You know, Fox Sports One used to be on ESPN. Yeah. Yada yada. Chris, yeah. He said that if Denver win this finals and and the Joker gets the championship, he's already ahead of Dirk Nowinski. What do you think about that? Man, that is tough as hell because Dirk in his career, um, I mean, he's an all-time great. He is an all-time great. Um, And to literally talk about his whole career um he's had one of the greatest careers of all time one of the most unstoppable forces in NBA history um but honestly I would say if I'm looking from Joker from a basketball standpoint as a player Jamar 
Yeah. I would say yes, he's a bad overall better basketball player than the Joker. We probably can agree there because of all the things that the Joker do. But in regards to passing him up, um, I don't think he's passed him up yet. Um, it would be nice, yeah, one championship. But remember, Dirk went to two NBA finals. Remember, right. Dirk was up against Miami right. uh, 2-1 um, until Dwayne Wade happened um, in 2006. Right. Dirk went to the conference finals about five times, if I'm not mistaken. He went once with Steve Nash, twice with Steve Nash, and after that, he had a nice run with all those other teams. So Dirk, uh, excuse me, um, had quite an uh, NBA career. And so I don't necessarily know if he passed him up. I think he still got work to do. But my question would be, in regards to passing him up, are he, is he saying just like all time? Is he stating on the basis of European basketball greatness? Like, but, you know. I, I think it's like legacy. Okay, legacy. And so, uh, yeah, I don't say uh, not. I, I don't. I don't think. Nah, not now, bro. But you know, don't get me wrong. Joker's fantastic, but passing no. up Dirk right now, he got more work to go. No, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that one. Um, yeah. Not to mention, you know, I think Dirk is pretty positive. Dirk is what five or six all time in, in scoring. On top of that, and then. Mm. And then not to mention, within like the last 25 years, that Dallas Mavericks championship back in 11 is probably has the most weight mm. within the last 25 years that I can remember. Like and, that and title. That title, bro. Holds more weight than, than I would say like Kevin Durant winning those two rings just, just for mm -hmm. Kevin Durant. Specifically. Right. Like that title holds more weight now let's just say for instance if Miami wins this title I feel like that title is up there with that dirt title in 11. Yep but that if was the biggest title, upsets ever man. Correct so I, I mean there's there's levels to this like you like let, let's just say for instance like like you know Boston and the Bill Russell era right with all those championship stuff like we don't like this day and age, I mean, we understand the championship is a championship, but do those hold more weight than the competition that it is now? Do we mm -hmm. do we consider it? exactly? So it's like Dirk. Dirk has like put in the work. We we saw Dirk, you know, go through his triumphs and and you know his his road to to glory throughout all the obstacles he had to climb to get there. Like mm -hmm. you mentioned back in 06, it was actually up 2 0 and leading in the third quarter of game three. Mm -hmm. Then Dwayne Wade happened, and the rest right, of the system, right. they did not mm -hmm. recover from that. They lost four straight. It was a wrap. Mm -hmm. We saw Dirk win the MVP and get put out in the first round. <laughs> <clears throat> yep. We is and then the year that they end up winning the championship against Miami and, you know, the big three's first year. I mean, they swept the Lakers prior to that. They, they went through Kobe, swept him out the playoffs. And, and uh, not to mention that Lakers team that year was a pretty damn good team. Yes, you still have Kyle Gasol. You still have Bynum. Oh, who was actually Lamar. Like, you still had core pieces to that championship team two years prior. I mean, what, the prior year? It so, was just yeah, the prior year. It was just the prior, yeah. prior year. That was it. People still had the Lakers' as favorites, remember? People were saying if the Lakers won that series, they would go, uh, go back to the final. I remember that specifically from people like Chris Broussard. And yeah, this is why we in college, Mark. <laughs> you're right. And it, they were um, two-time chance at the time. Yeah. Exactly. It was, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, it, it's great of a phenomenal, you know, uh, talent and accomplishments and skill set that the Joker has, I, there's still more work to be done because before the playoffs started, I put Denver and him on notice. Like, okay, look, y'all, you know, Joker, I mean, Joker, you got two MVPs. You've been upset in the playoffs. You haven't made the finals yet. Like, what are you going to do? <laughs> you responded to the challenge because I called out some other players before the playoffs, like Donovan Mitchell, <laughs> nowhere to be found. 
I think we're still looking for uh, DeAndre Ayton. That man still hasn't been found yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so at, at least, you know, Joke is responding here. I mean, but, but yeah, as far as career-wise, it, it's still some more work to be done. But is there is it out the realm of possibility that he could pass her? Not at all. I mean, that's, that's right. real possible. Absolutely. Yeah. So, it could be rather sooner than later, but, you know, it depends on um, – he got to get uh, definitely, I would say, another ring for me. Um, he could continue, Jamar, to, um, you know, score, and that would be great. But um, I would say he need a, at least a couple more years. He need, he need a couple more years because we're talking about a whole career here. So, yeah, it's quite disrespectful. On the other hand, um, in Jones, uh, he's cracking up with something. Um and then Prescott JB good morning stated, here's a strategy for the Heat. Never ever shoot threes again. And so he's giving the Miami Heat advice to lay off the threes. Sort of like um you give advice to somebody, um, like maybe a, a your child or something. You say, Hey son, lay off the pop, okay? Lay off the <laughs> chocolate chip cookies. And so uh Prescott JB, thanks for that advice to the Miami Heat. Lay off the threes. On the other hand, Kevin Brown stated, and he sounds like um, he's in agreement with you, I don't think he passes him up. I think Joker is a better all-around player, but Dirk had to go through Shaq, Kobe, Tim Duncan, and David Robinson in the first 10 years. Um, not to mention LeBron. Uh, not to mention um, various other greats. And so yeah. like, this, is, uh, this is true, Kevin. I mean – Dude, I remember growing up as a kid, like the Western Conference had powerhouses left and right oh my God. with yeah. big men. And, like we forget like Chris Webber. He had to go through that. And that can't right. stand. Uh Tareem Adul Rahim at one point in time. I mean Thank uh, Rasheed you. Wallace. I mean Dude, like it was stacked. It was fun to watch. Like Absolutely. You, know, you know, at one point, yeah, it was the Lakers, but then it was like everybody else that was competitive enough to give the Lakers a run for their money at certain points in time. But, you know, when the Lakers right. at, their, at their peak, then it was like back in 01, when nobody's stopping that. But other than that, I mean, it was, it was great. And you right. had to go, that built character. That built his toughness. Because when he came in the league, he was known to be soft. Like, I thought he was soft. Right, me but too. Especially after 06, I'm like, dang, you just got bullied. But when he won in 11, that label went off quick. Like he he fought through that. He he, mm -hmm. he actually mentally tough, and he actually plays on defense a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And yeah, Kevin stated Barkley. Like, yeah. Um, you know, the West has been loaded for me, uh, Jamar. Man, I would say since the early '90s, really. And even amongst when Jordan and, the, you know, our Chicago Bulls had their runs, there was still a lot of juggernauts in the West um, that were just battling it out, you know, uh, the Houstons, the Utahs, the Seattles, all those squads was battling it out. But it was like after when Jordan left, the West really got strong. Like yeah. after Jordan left, the West really got strong and the East seemed like they went more defensive minded. And the West for me just was more fireworks. Facts. Kevin Garnett you know, and the Timberwolves. That's another one. Right. It was it was so many different teams, man. You know, I just think of Jason Kidd and Phoenix, you know, in the fast break. Um, Portland. <laughs> I mean, the West has been loaded for years and years and years. And that's that's just been a tradition, man. And the East has more so been like, you know, defensive mind. And it's still like a very similar narrative today. Um I just see a lot of excitement in comparison to the West and always to the East. I, I, that really hasn't changed for me yet, bro. Um, and so, yeah, you know, um, I asked you this question. In regards to game two of the NBA Finals, what adjustments do you think the Heat got to make in order to gain home court back? First and foremost, attack the basket. All right. <laughs> Basically, what, what, you know, Prescott JV was saying, you know, strategy for the Heat, never, ever, you know, shoot threes again. I ain't going that far. But, look, so we, you know, when we talked about Denver and these playoffs, we, we talked about the firepower that they have and they can score in bunches. Like, you know, in the last round, 
where it seemed like, you know, the Lakers had control, then all of a sudden Denver just fought, you know, scores and bunches and the Lakers get stagnant uh, on offense. This is similar here. So Denver can still score in bunches, mm-hmm. but in order to kind of like offset that, you have to attack the basket, get to the free throw line. Not saying that you don't shoot threes, but you can't shoot them at the same style that Denver could shoot. Like Denver could just pull up and start hitting threes. Mm-hmm. Miami necessarily can't do that. Miami needs to attack the basket first, create, you know, the the def- make the defense collapse and then kick out. You, right. you, you need three-point shooting that is more efficient. That's the way you can compete with Denver in this series to offset their three-point explosiveness. You gotta get you can get threes, but you gotta get them at a more efficient rate than just mm-hmm. pulling up off the drip. You, you're gonna lose every time. You're right. not gonna lose that battle just pulling up with Denver. Right. So they have to attack the basket, get to the free throw line, put pressure on Denver, maybe get somebody in foul trouble. Make them change things defensively, and then you have a chance. Right. Um, I would say, uh, and and thank you for that. Uh, Well, we want to hear you guys, uh, Facebook. We want to see you guys' thoughts as well. Um, What does Miami have to do? Please uh, hit us up on a uh, message thread, y'all. What does Miami have to do in order to steal game two and take back home court? What do they need to do? And so Jamar states that they need to attack. They need to attack, um, lay off uh, all these open mysteries, um, and take that strategy. Um, I say this, bro. It's sort of like a boxing match. Um, by the way, and I'm very excited for, for that Spence uh, fight coming up with Crawford. Um, but they got to lay the first blow, bro. Think about it. Miami has always, in their wins, they have been the team to come out of later first blow. And then they've also been a team to lay the last blow. They've been the one to finish. And so the best chance for the Miami Heat, y'all, in my opinion, and it's, you know, a similar agreement. It's talking about the attack aspect. They got to attack, but they got to attack uh, through land blows. They got to hit clutch shots. They need others to step up. Cal Lowry, you got to play, okay? Um, you done made a big, big transition from uh, that picture we had on the early morning sports talk podcast community page with you and your Toronto Raptors jersey and the uh, booty short song. You've made a big transition, okay? But now we need you to continue to play and be clutch like you were in the finals with Toronto and all your career. And you have been throughout the playoffs. Cal Lowry got to play, man. They get Tyler Hero back game three. That's good news, right? Um, Caleb Martin, you got to hit your shots. Uh, you are almost finals MVP in the uh, Eastern Conference. Um, a lot of people were angry. They stated he was the most consistent player, Jamar, in the Eastern Conference finals, not Jimmy Butler. So he got to come out and play. Uh, the others got to show up, man. Um, Gabe Vincent, he played a good game one. He did. You know, but he got to continue to have a strong game, too. And then lastly, I need a damn Jimmy Butler to be aggressive because I'm I'm maybe I'm just the only one. I saw a very timid Jimmy Butler. He was trying to be a damn LeBron, pass the ball, not get too involved in the game. I want to get the others involved. You know what I'm saying? Let everybody get their points. And then at that time, I'm going to go ahead and take over. But by that damn time, the game's already over. (laughs) You know? You know? And so Jimmy got to come out there and hoop. Like, he got to come out there and be a dog, the Jimmy Butler that we know, because he's playing against a very, very, very great Denver team with so many options. So many options. No, you're right. Bruce Brown. Bruce Brown. Yeah, and low key he all right too. He he all right, he decent. Yeah. You know? So, what you gonna do? What you gonna do, Jimmy? Mm. You are the key of your team. You are you are the reason why they there. You gotta show up. What we got in the comments, bro? We got any comments, Jamal? Yeah. So, uh, Ian he stated, "Can Denver have a run like the Warriors did if they win these finals?" 
Hell yeah, they can. Yep. You think so? Because they young, Jamar. Yep. They young. They young. If we just saying specifically like the Warriors, like longevity, I don't know about that, Jamar. You bring up a good point when you say really because it makes me now really think, can it be sustained to where you got five straight NBA Finals appearances? The Nuggets, you know, they're in their first NBA Finals, y'all. Keep in mind, Golden State had five straight NBA Finals appearances from the 2015 when they won first against LeBron, 2016, lost, right? They lost to LeBron. They were up 3-1, et cetera. 2017, 2018, KD, boom, easy. Easy championships, easy. You know? Uh, then 2019, you lose to Kawhi, um, in which, again, <laughs> you know, you, you had injuries that series, too. And so um, in regards to... Golden State, that run, no, no, because I just look at the Lakers. The Lakers are one piece away, I feel like, Jamar, from being able to fight with Denver. Um, we see what just happened with uh, Phoenix. I mean, they got a great head coach now, Frank Vogel, to address their defensive issues. Um, this leads to our transition coming up, but, like, um, it's, it's, it's the West is too loaded, my bro. The West is too loaded and go to state. I don't think they done. I don't think they done. I don't <laughs> think they're done. I don't think they're done. Um, yeah, that they're, 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 they're too lethal. They're, I don't think they're done. Um, you got Memphis who angry always. Um, it's a lot of good competition. Ooh, That's speaking, speaking Sacramento speaking, who's yeah. going up. Sorry. Uh no, oh, speaking of ahead. speaking of uh, Memphis. Oh yeah, Jabba. <laughs> <laughs> now what happened? What 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 did Adam Silver say about him? Hey man, Adam Silver said he do their investigation. They found additional information here, additional yeah. information, and then he was like, you know what? We're not gonna like you know lay the hammer down right now. This is the NBA Finals. These these players and teams and coaches you know deserve this moment in the big stage. But once this is over, once the settle, right. once the dust clears. Oh, best believe John Moran gonna get this hammer. Yeah. Ooh wee. It, it sounds like it's gonna be heavy too. And yeah. and how, man, that just sounds so embarrassing. I'd be embarrassed if they fall John Moran. I wouldn't even go outside because like <laughs> now everybody they see him walking down the street. John, what you do now, bro? What you do now? Huh? What Adam Silver gonna say next? Huh? I bet his dad called him like, what your ass do now? Huh? Like <laughs> That's that's one of those is like when you like acting up when you a kid and you acting up <laughs> and your mom was like, Oh, wait till we get home. You getting a whooping when right. we get home. <laughs> so you quiet the whole car wide home, hoping she forget. <laughs> you walk in the house, she ain't forget though. <laughs> right. And you be so nice and polite. <laughs> and it ain't I'm telling work. you, right? Try to stop, and make good conversation, make your mommy and daddy forget about it. Like, oh yeah, I got an A on my math test. Like, I ain't trying right. to hit. <laughs> And then your parents get home, y'all sit down, eat dinner. It's almost time to go to bed. You jump up, get ready to go to bed. Then your mom and daddy say, come here. You'd be like, damn. <laughs> yeah. You know? And so, yeah. Yeah, that's that's job right now. So that, that's 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 job right for sure right now. Man. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm 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 highly into it to see what he gets. <laughs> like, so yeah you're right that is embarrassing though like jeez like man and, dude, and it's wild because it's like like they want Ja to be one of the faces of the nba by far like he because yeah. he's so marketable but at the same time it's like for the greater good of the product we got to put a we got to send a message though that's that's what it is yep they got to send a message for sure they got to send a message for sure so they look like they're gonna lay the law down for this uh brother and um they put it out there uh probably intentionally to maybe embarrass him on purpose to send a message to him and stop doing what he's doing. So um we'll see. Um but this this leads us to the transition, Jamar. Uh uh, yeah. we've talked about the NBA finals, what the Heat need to do. We gave our thoughts for game one. So we'll see how this series progress. 
Uh, let's talk about the NBA coaching hires, bro. So we got a number of NBA coaching hires that have taken place. And so we're, we want to know you guys' thoughts. Which NBA head coach that has recently been hired is either the most exciting for you or stand out for you the most? Again, which of these hires are the most exciting for you or stand out for you the most on the basis of new NBA head coaches that have been hired? And so, FYI, y'all, we got Adrian Griffin. I'm super proud, y'all, because as a Bulls fan, I remember Adrian Griffin being our point guard. I remember him being an efficient, smart guy that was always a good, savvy veteran. Uh, I remember him being an assistant coach back in the D-Rose days. You know what I'm saying? Back when we had our run with Chicago Bulls. And to see him become the Milwaukee Bucks head coach as an African-American man, but just as a Bulls fan and seeing all the work he did for us, I'm super proud, man. Frank Vogel, y'all, to Phoenix. Frank Vogel, you know, a lot of runs with the Pacers. As you know, Jamar, Indianapolis, championship with the Lakers. He to yep. Phoenix now. Money Williams, 78.5 mil, okay, to go up to D-Town, up to the Motown. And so he is up in Detroit, and he is, believed the highest head coach, the highest paid head coach ever. Correct, Jamar? Yep, and the centers can go up to 100 mil. Ooh, beautiful. I love it. Yes. Money Williams to Detroit. And then Nick Nershaw went from Toronto now to Philly. And he sent a good message to James Harden. This message was James Harden was, I came here basically because I see the greatness in you. And so with that being said, Jamar, which of these hires are the most exciting for you or stand out the most for you? Or you can just give us whatever you want to state about it. You know, you know how we do. So, yeah. Um, each one of them, I, I do, uh, you know, appreciate each, each one of them for different reasons. So, like, mm -hmm. like you mentioned for a Adrian Griffin, like, like that, that hit home a little bit there. Just knowing where, you know, his basketball career was here and his, you know, I guess up the <laughs> coaching ladder there. Along the way, you know, right. his son is in the league right now with the Atlanta Hawks. So, him being ah uh, Money Williams' son. No, no, um, uh, Griffin. Ah, uh, okay, I didn't know that word. Okay. Yep, uh, AJ Griffin. Ah, uh, okay, word. Yep. Can't so, be going to Google now. So, um, so yeah, him getting the Milwaukee job like that's 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 a good gig. That's a really good gig. Um, but. You know, there are questions with Giannis. Does he really want to stay in Milwaukee? I mean, we'll, we'll find out in the next summer. Um, right. Mm, the, that's a really good point. The Frank Vogel one. I, and that, like, I'm personally, I'm happy for Frank Vogel because, you know, he was the scapegoat for, for the Lakers, right? Like, they just blame the Lakers not having any success on Frank Vogel when, you know, it was a lot more than just Frank Vogel. That, that wasn't even on him, in my opinion. So to see him and get, the Phoenix Suns coaching job, which is definitely one of the better ones, opportunities in this league, uh, in a win now mode, do you know, as a proven winner um, with his pedigree. So to see that, and just just FYI, this is Kevin Durant's fourth coach within the last 365 days. Wow. Mm. So just take yeah. that. With oh, that's a lot. That's a lot to deal with. Yeah. Um, Monty going to Detroit. I'm, I'm excited to see that. I am, because I want to see what he's going to do with these young pieces. They have Exactly, bro. They have a bunch of young, high lottery draft pick talent there. You mm -hmm. got Kay Cunningham when they got a number one pick a couple years ago. Like, that mm -hmm. dude's going to be really good. You drafted mm -hmm. Jaden Ivey, boiler up. Mm. Um, you got um, what's his name? Uh, Duran, uh, the center. You got him. Uh, I mean, they, yeah, yeah. I mean, you talking about Jalen Duran? Yep. Got him. Jalen Duran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know who I really like, man. Uh, I like that they got James Wise. I was just that was a real... <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that that was a really really good pickup for for Detroit, mm -hmm. and you know them, them picking them up, man. Uh, what was the other cat, uh, Jamar, uh, Bay, Bay, uh, 
Is his uh, last Sadiq name Bay. Sadiq Bay? He nice. Sadiq Bay is nice. Sadiq Bay is very very nice. That's 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 a really really nice hooper, and he can ball, man, for absolute sure. Uh, and so yeah, you know, they still got um, what's the uh international guy Bogdanovic? They have them still. I don't. Yeah, they got Bojan Bogdanovic. Yeah, yeah, Bojan yeah. Bogdanovic. You know, you're you right. got a young guy, Zell Stewart. You know, they got they got talent, man. They they really. Billy Bayheim, Jim Bayheim's son. <laughs> oh man, money Bay. <laughs> yeah, 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 man. They got Marvin Bagley on the roster, bro. Remember young oh, Marvin Bagley. Gosh. So they have a plethora of high lottery draft picks on this team. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. Monty is known to he is known to develop talent, and with them giving him six years, that lets me know that they're actually going to be patient with him. And this is one of the few, I guess, rare things that you see nowadays in sports in general, like patience. There, right. we live in such a microwave society; we want results instantly. But some things just take time. So now they're giving him an opportunity to develop and go through the, the growing pains to get them to where they need to be. So seeing the six years, that was the part that that, that stuck out to me the most was the years right. on the deal. Right. So, so, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see what this team is in three years. Right. I, and then lastly, Nick Nurse to the Sixers. I mean, I like Nick Nurse as a coach. Maybe this might be the – the voice that that they, that they need in Philly to get over the hump, maybe maybe because it, it ain't it ain't lack it ain't lack Rivers. I, I tell you that <laughs> much. It ain't him. I leave him alone. But yeah, but you know we'll see. I think they off their team will be predicated if James Harden stays or goes. That's that's because he got. I think he got a player option here. It's up to him. Right. Yeah. What do you? No, I mean I'm with you, man. Um... I'm really, really excited to see Money go to, you know, Detroit. Him get a young nucleus. Uh, it would kind of remind me of, um, you know, uh, him getting a young nucleus in Phoenix. Um, the only thing is that they brought in a good veteran to mix with uh, that young talent of uh, Aiden and uh, who is on the APB right now and um, Devin Booker, you know, and you see what happened with them. Could Detroit be that, Jamar? Could Detroit, with all that young talent they get, could they bait in? you know, a good, savvy, nice veteran and mix it with all that young talent in Detroit. And who knows, you know, it could become a playoff team. You know, it could become, you know, the East ain't like super, super duper uh, dominant. So, you know, can they become competitive and, you know, be a little playoff team or something? So they got a lot of talent there, man. We just went through their roster, y'all. They got a lot of little young ballers in Detroit um, and they can do a lot with that. Um they got a high draft pick again, again. And so we'll see what they do with this draft. I'm very interested in seeing what Detroit do, man. Um, my biggest concern, though, here, bro, is Nick Nurse to the Sixers. I don't know if he's really the voice. And I don't know if his voice will be any different than anybody else's in Philly. Um, Philly, you know, I think the process is dead, number one. But number two, in regards to Philly, I just feel like they're just one of those teams to where, unfortunately, they can't overcome certain teams because they just got a mental lapse here, number one. It's a culture, I feel like, there. And then number two, you know, at moments, when the biggest moments arise, Joel and B don't be there. Keep it real. You know, when the, when the moments get real large, Shamar, he ain't really there. You know, regular season, yeah. You know, blowouts, yeah. Weaker opponents, yeah. Early rounds of the playoffs, yeah. But when we get to that second round and they get crucial and they get down to a game seven or something, that man ain't nowhere to be bound. Here, here DeAndre Aiden, APB. And so I don't know if Nick Nurse is the difference there. We will see. But um, we're going to see really how good of a coach he is, Jamar. We're going to really see. Um, he did a lot of great wonders with Toronto, but if he can turn this Philly team into a conference final team 
because that's the expectation, Jamar. Second round, no, no. They need conference finals or better. If not, it's a failure. Thanks. Let me let me ask you this, because, you know, I mentioned James Harden, you know, the uncertainty is his future. Yeah. Would that team be better off <laughs> if they had Van Fleet instead of James mm-hmm. Harden? <clears throat> Wait, you saying if Philly had Fred Van Vliet instead of James Harden, would they be better off? Yes. Ooh, that's a decent question. Uh, Cause at least Fred Van Vliet, I know what I'm gonna get from him. I know it's gonna be consistent. I know from Fred Van Vliet, he will defend James Harden on the field. That's one of his biggest weaknesses. Very talented offensively. Let's name a moment where we saw James Harden shut somebody down. <laughs> the Thunder days, <laughs> coming off the bench as a six man. <laughs> that was the last time he was known to play defense, really. Yeah, back in his OKC days, huh? And yeah. so, um, when it comes to that question, I would still rather have James Harden because of what he brings offensively. I um, mean. Knowing what he has done, I guess I would still be a sucker and say he can still go off for 35 one night, you know. Um, but I can tell you this, when it comes to Fred Van Vliet, I know I'm going to get a consistent 20 points. So the question then becomes, do I want a consistent 20 points every night or do I want a 35, 23, 15? One game, one game, two game, three games. Game, sorry. But also you know? on top of that, no, I feel you. But also on top of that, with that consistent 20 points, you probably get somebody that's more poised that actually got it done before that actually brings right. a little bit more toughness to your team and probably actually brings more chemistry to your team. Would you want that? Mm-hmm. Would you want? I, I would. I would. And so um, I'm changing my ass. I, I would go with Trevor Land beat because I, I see the consistency. And I know what I'm going to get with him. And yeah, I man. know that when it really counts, he'll be there. You know, James, I don't know. I really don't. And that's a shame to think of based off of the contract that he's gotten, the money he's made over his career, you know, and the the, the respect he has around the league for being like a, a superstar. But is he really a superstar? Mm. Superstars, you know, they they get it done and they go to the – you know, they, they get it done in the big moments, et cetera. And so, um, yeah, just makes me think of Damian Lillard. What if Damian Lillard was in Philly, you know? Like, Damian Lillard um, is a real superstar because Damian Lillard is consistent. James Harden is not consistent, so how the hell is he a superstar when I look at Damian Lillard, who don't have any help in Portland, right? Uh, but he's a superstar. And so, um yeah, that's a, that's a good question, bro. Um, Philly, we'll see what happens with them. Because second round ain't good enough. They've been there, done that, all that time with Doc or Lack Rivers. They need something better than that. Hopefully Nick Nurse can get him uh, to another level. Um, and so, yeah, uh, with that being said, bro, uh, any other final thoughts before we progress to our Stanley Cup final picks quickly? Uh, I think Ian pretty much gave us a trifecta on Monty Williams is going to change that Detroit culture around. We all mm-hmm. are excited for Monty Williams in Detroit. Absolutely. Yeah, very excited for him, man. Very excited for Monty Williams. Very excited for Adrian Griffin. I'm proud. You know, as Bull fans, we're proud to see him finally get that position and to get it with, you know, hopefully Giannis being there. I hope that he don't get the job, Jamar. And then Giannis leaves. That would be terrible to see. You know, that would be terrible to see. Um, I'm really hoping that, you know, they're not bringing him in to be the black scapegoat as we see all the time in sports, Jamar. Get a black head coach in, you know, bring him into a worse situation than it ever has been. And they just doing that to basically set him up to say, hey, we're going to hire a black coach and then fire his ass a few years later. Oh, uh, that sounds like, uh, uh, what's his name? Paul Silas' son in Houston? Yeah. Ooh, that's a good example. Set that man clean up. You know, yeah, we got us a black hair coach in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ain't get that man nothing to work with. Nothing. 
Man. And it's, it's, it's crazy to think, you know, the brains behind these operations, bro. Yeah, we're going to fill out this quota so we, you know, do our affirmative action. And, you know, we're going to hire uh, Paul Sider's son, you know, and say, hey, we got a black head coach. And bring him all 15 years, basically, fresh out of high school, and say, go win the championship. <laughs> yeah, if you crazy. didn't win the championship, we got to fire you. Sorry. Yeah, that, that's that's bogus. Um, it's bogus, and it happens all the time. And then last, last thing before we move on. So what's today? So two days ago, I did create a poll in, the, in our group, the Early Morning Sports Talk Podcast community page. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, you know, predictions for the NBA Finals. We got 39 votes in. I basically, you know, highlight the picks with Heaton 4, Heaton 5, Heaton 6, Heaton 7, or Nuggets in 4, 5, 6, and 7. Mm-hmm. So in 39 votes, we have one person that picked Heaton 4. Uh, nobody picked Heaton five. Eleven people picked Heaton six. Wow. Uh, eight people picked Heaton seven. Four people wow. picked Nuggets and four. Eight people picked Nuggets and five. Seven people picked Nuggets and six, and nobody picked Nuggets and seven. So the Heat actually got more votes than Nuggets. As far as uh, so I think majority, let me see, 8, 15, 15, 19, yeah. 19 for the Nuggets, right? Yeah, and 20 for the Heat. And 20 for the Heat. Yeah. Yeah. And so, wow, what the hell is wrong with y'all? <laughs> I mean, 11 people picked Heat and 6. Exactly. I mean, I'm not saying that it can't happen, but, you know, you know. I'm really interested, man. We got to, uh, wow, we, we really need to talk about that further. Thank you for bringing these beautiful numbers up. Because, yeah, what stood out to me quickly was four, eight, and seven for the Nuggets, which meant 19 out of 39. Yeah. And so, yeah. wow, 20 people picked the Heat. What were y'all, like, why? I just want to know why. Um, have y'all not noticed that the Heat just went through seven brutal games? Um, Nuggets swept their opponent. Nobody can stop the Joker. The second best player in the NBA playoffs is his teammate, Jamal Murray. They have an all-around great core of team that is surrounding these two guys. Plus, they play in the climate in Denver, which is an advantage in itself. And so, it's interesting. Um, I mean... It's pretty much evenly split. The only one that was a little outlandish to me was the the individual that picked Keaton four. But, <laughs> but I mean, if the, he was the win the series, I mean, Heaton six or Heaton seven, maybe seven is probably more realistic in my opinion. But if right. the, but nevertheless, I mean, that lets you know that at least half the people believe, you know, in this heat wave, <laughs> quote unquote. And this Jimmy Butler led heat wave of of uh, success that they're on right now, right? You know, you know, I think it's more so that you know the heart versus the mind. The heart probably wants the heat to win because of the 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 story that it's becoming. But you know, in your mind, it's like you know the Nuggets are a better team. But I mean, the proof in the pudding is Milwaukee was a better team. Boston was a better team. Exactly. I, I can't, you know, uh, distinctly say the Knicks were a better team, but at least two of those teams were a better team. Right. And the Heat won. So exactly. We- yeah. And 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 people all over the place have Boston against Miami, all over the place. And they were up 3 0 against Boston. <laughs> and so um, yeah, that is very interesting to see that basically 20 people. Including the person picked the Heat in four. Um, out of 39 votes, the Heat on the early morning sports talk podcast, NBA Finals poll, outnumbered the Denver Nuggets, y'all. 20 to 19. Wow. wow, wow. And so that is uh, very, very interesting. And so um, we'll see. Jamar, as stated, bro, the series is young. It's only game one. And so 
yeah, man, maybe uh, folks see that the Heat, um, they see them at home, Jamar. They see how tough they are at home, you feel me? And they like, hey, you know, like, the series can shift for someone to get to South Beach or they feel like maybe they can steal one in Denver. You know, they saw Tyler Hero coming back too. So, I, you know, they're I, like, hey, maybe that'll be, you know. I mean, Tyler Hero coming back. That, that is that. That's huge, but we'll. I guess we'll see what happens. We'll we will see. absolutely see what happens. I'm very interested to see what happens. So, yeah, well, um, that is great. And so, Jamar, uh, thank you for that, bro. Um, and so, world, we will conclude this morning with our NHL Stanley Cup final picks and what we got: the Florida Panthers, bro. This is a Cinderella story again. Um, nobody expected the Florida Panthers to go to the NHL Stanley Cup Finals, but as we know, y'all, in hockey, uh, it is one of those sports where Jamar, um, any team, I mean, one through 16 can go to the damn Stanley Cup. It just depends on how hot they get. It is an ultimate sport of, like, baseball, like, hotness. And so, like, <coughs> literally... <clears throat> seeing Florida in the Stanley Cup, it's like, it's a surprise, but it's not a surprise based off of what you, we know with hockey. On the other hand, I expected the Golden Knights to be there, Jamar. Since this team has been enacted, bro, um, in the last few years, this has been the most successful franchise in hockey. In their inaugural season, they went to the Stanley Cup final, Okay. Last year, they went deep in the playoffs. They ain't been around for no more than three, four years. And now they're in the Stanley Cup again. And so, Jamar, um, no, we don't really watch hockey like that. None of us do. Um, and being honest, on the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast, we don't, um, we honestly don't talk about it a lot, you know? Um, and so, honestly, when I make my pick, I'm making my pick just based off of a random guess. And I'm going to just state the team I want to see win because I really don't know who is the better team. And I'm just telling y'all from a standpoint of hockey, it ain't about who's the better team. It's about who's the hottest team. It's about whose skates are flowing the best. Just like you're out there skating, Jamar, your skates are just free. So, um, with that being said, bro, Vegas has home court. They started out in Vegas, okay? And so, with that being said, Jamar, who do you have for the Stanley Cup? Who do you want to see win, or just who do you have for the Stanley Cup? I, I, I appreciate your, your full-blown honesty here uh, as far as hockey, because I am 110% yeah. in the same boat here especially since there's, yeah. there's no Blackhawks to be around for a while. So I'm just like yeah. paying attention from a distance, from a far distance, right. but just knowing for the record books. Um, yeah, I mean, I was aware of Las Vegas, you know, being really good in their short years of existence here. And I'm like, I was sitting there like, didn't they go to the finals? And then you mentioned, I'm like, yep. So that hey, you mind, can I make one quick point, my brother? Let me show y'all about hockey. Okay, show you how up and down this uh this is unbelievable, Jamar. How up and down and how close this sport is, how close it is. You can have seeds one through eight, Jamar, and only a goal or a few skates will separate that one game. Literally, bro. When it comes to the consensus for the pick for the NHL Stanley Cup, y'all, the 22 Stanley Cup final between the Vegas Golden Knights and Florida Panthers is the equivalent of the 50-50 puck battle according to 16 NHL.com writers and editors. Eight predicted Jamar to go to nice to win the cup, while the other eight believe the Panthers will win. And so we're not wrong for making a guess. Here. Not at all. Mm -mm. <laughs> no, we're not. Um, I mean, you're right. You're definitely right as far as like, like home ice doesn't really have that advantage. It's just more so who's hot. And it kind of had, like you mentioned, which I was going to mention, the baseball effect. A hot team, it's just hot at the right time. 
that just like in baseball, you're just seeing the ball right, you know, more clear at the right time. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's like, it's the same boat. So I'm a sucker for Cinderella stories. I am. I, I'm going to pick Florida, but I, I feel like my, it's mind over heart thing. I feel like my brain says the Golden Knights should win, supposed okay. to win, but screw it. I'm going with the Cinderella here. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, I see Ann Jones chiming in with Dwayne Hawkins. Um, Dwayne Hawkins stated, Ann Jones, why don't they? Uh, he's talking about jokers on a different level of basketball right now. And so Dwayne Hawkins is coming in. He's taking up for the heat, I can imagine. Um, and Ann Jones stated, Dwayne Hawkins, Denver is healthy and too deep, in my opinion. And so, yeah, um, Dwayne, we love you, my brother. We know you are a great supporter of the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast. Um, but, you know, um, if it comes to Miami winning the series, they will have to do it with speed. They will have to come and they will have to punk Denver. Um, and so we're not saying it's impossible. We're not. But your heat definitely is an underdog in the series. And so um, we'll see how it turns out. The Heat has proved everybody wrong, everybody. And Jamar pointed it out before the NBA playoffs. He stated it was a team that could lose in the first round and a team that can go to the championship, and here they are. And so uh, we'll see, man. Um, but they definitely are underdog. Um, on the other hand, when it comes to the Stanley Cup finals, wow, this stat is unbelievable, man. This is unbelievable. And so I'm going to go with the Golden Knights. And the reason why I'm going to go with the Golden Knights, Jamar, is simply this. They have been there, done that for the last few years. Went to the Stanley Cup recently. Went to the Western Conference Finals last year. Um, so they have been a team that's been peaking. And so, you know, the Cinderella story um, is very real and it works in hockey. Um, but, you know, I'm just going with experience here and say they go to Knights uh, because of home court and because of experience. <clears throat> and I cough because I'm not sure. So, yeah, that is my pick for the NHL Stanley Cup Finals. Um, on the other hand, good morning, Jeremy. Good morning, good morning, Dwayne. Um, you guys, let us know about your uh, picks for the Stanley Cup Finals. Um, out of sixteen HL.com writers, eight got to go tonight. Eight got Florida. So, um, there appears to not be a popular opinion here on who will win. Um, and it appears to just be a very, very, very close series. And so, yeah, home ice. Sorry, uh, Ian. We were saying home court, but home ice. Jim, Ian told us home ice. And so, um, yeah, Vegas got home ice in this case. And so maybe the home ice will uh, work out. So I got Vegas. Uh, let us know, fellas. Uh, Ian got Florida for the Cinderella story. and so. Dwayne, oh, he's, yeah, he only focused on his Miami Heat. He stated, <laughs> I get that, but still, they only lost by 12. They only lost by 12, right, Dwayne? And they only shot two free throws, which is strange. And Jimmy only had 13. How many games do you think Scruss and Martin going to have like they had game one? I'm going with my Heat in six to seven. All we need is with game two in Denver just to let them know that we the real deal and that will give us the confidence we need. All right. We ain't count Miami out. We ain't count them out. We know who they are. And so let's see, man. Game two is a very big game. And so we'll see the adjustment that the Heat make. Um, and if the Heat do steal game two, then Jamar, yeah, it's going to become a series. But if they lose game two, it's going to be tough on them. Because all Denver would need to do is steal one in my uh, dip Miami. And so uh, we'll see. It's going to be very, very, very interesting to see what happens with the rest of this series. So, Jamar, any final thoughts uh, before we close out? Good morning. Good morning, Dwayne. It's all good, bro. Any final thoughts on anything, man, like before we get to our final thoughts and shout outs? Um, just, uh, I guess, just a quick note. Um, apparently, Miami has not won in Denver since 2016. Ooh, okay. Wow. 
Okay. Well, this will be a perfect time in the ENS spell, right? And yeah, so, absolutely. And, you know, if, if they were to do it, it would be epic. It would be epic. Um, Denver is a very tough place to play out here, especially now that they got a good team. It was always a tough place to play in because of the climate. But <clears throat> now that you got a good team, <clears throat> it makes it that much tougher. And so, uh, yeah, I agree, Dwayne. They need to definitely keep it close. They need to keep it close in order to let Jimmy do what he do. Um, now, we'll see. But I think one thing also we need to begin to acknowledge so at this point, and this is my final point before we close, people underestimate the defense of Denver. They really, really underestimate the defensive prowess of Denver. Miami get a lot of credit, but Denver, y'all, have we thought about how lengthy they are and how lengthy they are compared to everybody they play? Denver was bigger than the Lakers. You know, Michael yeah, Porter Jr. is taller than LeBron. Michael Porter Jr. is 6'10". I did not know that, Jamar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He can do all that at 6'10". That's one of the reasons why I was so highly, you know, um, excited for this guy when he was coming out um, besides the scoring ability um, and to piggyback off what you said so I was watching a clip pretty sure yesterday <laughs> and it was stating that uh, it was from game one and Jokic was at the free throw line and he saw Cal Lowry I guess get the, the play call from the bench and so he you know gave a hand signal to the team Jokic picked up on it and gave his own signal of what the play was. And sure enough, they ran the play and let him behold, turnover, easy, mm-hmm. fast break. So it was like, like we, we know that Jokic is like a great mind on offense for sure. The IQ is there, but it's like, if he's doing this type of stuff as well for the defensive end, it makes it – I ain't going to say they don't have a chance, but, sheesh, like, you got to, like, really be playing chess out here. There, there's no checkers to be played right. at all. Right. Right, right, right. And so it's it's very, very interesting. And so, yeah, you know, Dwayne, he's taking it off his seat, and he got a right to. Um, As he should. Right, right. You know, he said, I still don't understand how we only shot free throws and – yeah, they got length everywhere, but length can be beat. Look at the Celtics. They were lengthy. So, yeah. So, we'll see. We'll see, Jamar. And so, with that being said, bro, any final thoughts or shout-outs we head into the weekend? Brother, we are in June. That means yes. we're a month away from NFL training camp, which right. means we are less than 100 days from the NFL kickoff. And so mm-hmm. – there are, you know, it is past June 1st. That means you're going to be, there's going to be some veterans that are going to be cut here. One of the names that I'm looking forward to to be cut, um, his name is Dalvin Cook. I'm, I'm ready for him to be gone out, out the division. All right. Um, okay. And so I'm just going to use saying that as an example because he's probably going to end up in either uh, Miami or Buffalo. Miami. Right. But nonetheless, it's just more so that the NFL continues to make headlines, continues to be a 365-day-a-year operation that dominates the sports in this country because it, like the NBA finals are going, still going on and the NFL can make headways on something and still gain full attention of the country. That's how powerful the billion-dollar industry is. So, therefore, right. you know, just be on the lookout for moves like that. Other than that, I'm enjoying the summer weather. I, I I I suggest everybody else do the same. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Appreciate that, man. Wow. Uh, yes. Uh, and Dwayne Hawkins, yeah, you got it. I hope Cook goes to the Lions. LMA AO just because. So. And also stated D Hop has a location too. I'm thinking answer comes Tuesday. And so. Yeah, I hope yeah, I hope DeAndre Hopkins goes to the Buffalo Bills. How about that? Yeah, and so Patriots fan. <laughs> right, DeAndre Hopkins goes to the uh to the Bills. That'd be fun for you, right, Dwayne? And so, 
Yeah. <laughs> Say go go to the Packers. <laughs> Stay in your division. <laughs> so. <laughs> and so yeah. I love the clap back between Jamar and Dwayne, your brothers. So, yes. And so, world, we appreciate you all chatting with us this morning on the Early Bonus Sports Talk podcast. And so, we appreciate the love. Uh, everybody stay safe out there. Keep God first. NHL finals began tonight. Game two NBA finals tomorrow. Shout out to Chicago Sky, Courtney Vandersloot. Took care of uh, our Chicago Sky, but our Chicago Sky looking tough, y'all. Uh, they lost 77-76 to the Liberty. Um, at Wind Trust, and so that was a very positive thing, and so we will see um, how we can progress with sports. Enjoy the weather, stay safe, and keep God first. Thank you all for rocking with us on the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast. May each of you have a great weekend. Peace. <laughs>